And I'll start with a few little technicalities. We're two and a bit years old. Uh, we started off with very, very little indeed. Uh, a couple of thousand active, loyal supporters from uh, after the UKIP leadership election. And as I've said many times, we started off in my living room. We won seats in our very first local election. We beat Labour, Tory all over the country in our very first local election. And something I, I don't think I say often enough, but is quite significant, is in our first year we achieved major party status at the Electoral Commission. Now, that is really, really significant. It really is. We are also the only party that Hope Not Hate is obsessed with. <laughs> obsessed! And they've brought out a new report about us again this week. I love it. If only they knew. And when I, because they watch every video, so when they watch this, they'll think I'm bluffing. They'll think I'm only saying this because I want them to stop. But there's a double bluff going on, because I really don't want them to stop. But they'll think I do, so they'll keep doing it. <laughs> Fantastic double bluff. But those technicalities, which are wonderful, and they are a reason to get on board with this party. But if that's not enough, the policies. Our policies are exactly what the country is talking about and the politicians aren't. What the country cares about and mainstream politicians don't. That is what we are talking about. All of the big issues for mass immigration and Pretty Patel give me a break. I will respond to Pretty Patel in full in the next couple of days when I've had a chance to read it properly and think through our response to it. But it's not good enough and it doesn't address what we need. We need to talk about our culture. We need to talk about the culture in a generation's time and two generations time. We as a party are offering solutions for now. For example, we want to stop this drain on our economy, stop bringing in people from all over the world when our own people are living below the poverty line. Yeah. This all has to stop and we'll do that right now. But something else this party will do is plan not just for next week, but for 10 years time, for 20 years time. We have a duty to the coming generations to act in their interests as well as our own. We have a duty to do that and we must. So we must stop Turn. We must turn the great ship of Great Britain back in the direction of sanity, of freedom of speech, of democracy. Yeah. Yeah. And look, just look, the opportunity is with us now. The opportunity is here. You know, Churchill said, it's always darkest before the dawn. Yeah. Well, it is pretty dark oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah. And from that darkness will come dawn, I promise you. Yeah. In the midst of the mess, is opportunity and our opportunity is here and one major reason for that is the Labour Party. <coughs> the Labour shambles, the Labour joke. The Labour Party is now a national eye roll. People are rolling their eyes at the Labour Party now. Its vote, its vote is dropping and dropping and dropping and has been for some time. Labour cannot turn this back around now. Do you know how I know that? The leadership election is how I know that. Have you ever heard such nonsense? And they are so spectacularly arrogant that they can't see it. They'll never see it. They think they lost that election by such a landslide because the electorate got it wrong. If only the electorate was as smart and as woke and as progressive as the Labour Party, they wouldn't have got it wrong. So what they intend to do now is stop you speaking and thinking in, in any way that isn't conforming to their ideals. So if you don't agree with the Labour Party, guess what you're guilty of? Hate. <laughs> Bigotry. If you don't believe the unbelievable, and we are in Orwellian territory here, and if I say the name Dawn Butler, you'll know exactly the Orwellian territory we are in. That La Dawn Butler senior front bench Labour MP said on television, and I quote, 
children are born without a sex. That's what she said. Lisa Nandy was asked straight out, should we put convicted rapists in women's prisons? Guess what she said? Yes. She said yes. Yeah. Rebecca Long Bailey was asked, will you change the law to include self-identification? Yes, she will. Keir Starmer, trans women are women. Emily Thornbury, trans women are women. No, they're not. And everyone knows it. And you are going to stop telling us to believe the unbelievable. We are not going to do it. I, I want to respond to some of the most regular criticisms this party gets from people on our side of politics. One, they only talk about Islam. First of all, it's just not true. It really is. I know that's where I came from. But if you go look through the recent videos, I haven't talked about Islam in quite a while. And actually, I, you know, it's, it's a long, long time since I gave a speech about Islam. It's almost become uh, just another, it has become just another issue. It's an enormous issue, but it is just one of many that we talk yeah. about. But the key is, we're the only ones who talk about it. We really, and it has to be talked about. Let's not pretend. And when I talk about the next generation and the generation after that, Islam is a big, big part of that. Oh, yeah. What are we going to leave them? Are we going to, you know, terror attacks in the street are already eh, just one of those things. Part and parcel, to quote Sadiq Khan. We have to talk about that. And the problem is with Islam, we're not talking about a single issue. And we're not talking about a minor issue. It affects freedom of speech. It affects the safety of children. It affects the rights of women. It affects our safety in the street. Our entire state, our entire apparatus is bowing down in obedience to it. And we're a Christian nation. Exactly. Our culture must be saved. And one of the biggest threats to it, if not the biggest threat to it, is Islam. And I will not torn away from that, I will not run away from it, I'm not scared of it, I will grab it because I know there are millions in this country who agree with every word I say, I know that we are a party representing people with no voice on this and Khadija at the back, ex-Muslim, no one is going to give her representation in politics, nobody except us. We're the only ones talking about the massive massive issues, like our basic liberties, like our democracy. We all know the state our democracy is in thanks to the Brexit result, and we didn't, of course, get a clean break Brexit. Uh, and I do hope, though, uh, that Boris doesn't spend the next 10 years talking about it. Uh, I would like us to move on to something else. Do you believe in him, Marie? Do you believe in Boris? No. 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 Neither do I. He's, but, you know, we are so desperate. For why, the reason why Boris is so popular, and I'm going to come on, I'm going to sort of enmesh this in my second common criticism of me, or this party, but particularly of me on this one, is the way I talk. Uh, first of all, I think that's a, just a little bit snobby, frankly, to criticise how I talk. I'm a normal, everyday, working class person. That's what I speak like. And if you don't, you know, if you insult the way I speak, you're insulting the way everyone in this room speaks. I am not going to put on some performance like I'm on a play, reading a script. I am here because I mean every word I say. I am here because I care. Say again? You sound posh compared to Jessica. No, no, no offence. I'll tell people that Labour Party back in front of I'll be trying to turn men's heads or something because that's the only way they're going to win votes. <laughs> uh, you, remind, you just remind me of a brilliant, we all know who Titania McGuire is, yeah. a brilliant uh, tweet by Titania saying we know that uh, Jess Phillips is a hard working class girl, we can tell by her accent, <laughs> <laughs> but she, she, totally, she totally grabbed on to that accent didn't she, I, heard, I shouldn't say this on the video, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't. Uh, no I won't, I will afterwards, not with the video on. <laughs> Uh, but look, to, we, are, we don't have a great deal of time, and I do want to get through as many questions as we can. But just to finish, uh, Boris Johnson, which is where I was going to talk about this, Boris Johnson is popular because of his personality. 
and because he is willing to say things. That little bit out there, you know, calling women in burkas postbox or letterboxes or whatever it was, that was funny and it showed a human side and it also showed that he's not afraid to actually say something off his own head. When you, these polished politicians, and no one is better at it than Labour, they are just full of slogans. And that when you catch them without script or without you know, rehearsal, they, you can see the fear in them. And I could see that in that hustings at Lisa Nandy the other day. She was terrified. You can see, you know, they, they, and then when they're terrified, they come out with a load of slogans. These pre-prepared slogans. The one I heard get an applause last week when he said it. I'm going to say that as well because I want the same applause. This is all it is. There's no thought there. There's no genuine concern there. Because if there was, if Labour MPs, for example, had genuine concern for the people they represent, that's who they would be talking about. But they are far too busy. Parliament came ablaze. Over 50 people deported to Jamaica. They were up in arms about it all of a sudden. And some of these people are the most disgusting criminals. And yet 170 of our MPs came together and said, shocking, we shouldn't be... Where were you when the Rotherham report was released? Where were you then? Where are you now? I can tell you that thousands of girls, as I stand here, are being gang raped by Muslim gangs across the north of England and elsewhere. As I speak... Where are the MPs? Where are they? They're too, a lot of Syria is going to come up along. The Tories are wedded to asylum seekers and refugees as well. And they won't meet the definition of either, I can guarantee it. Uh, this, the Pretty Patel thing doesn't solve any of these problems. But why are they bringing in, you know, we're, Boris is determined to bring in new people from Syria. Now, I'm not void of a heart. I feel sorry for people from Syria, but it's not the primary duty of the British government. The primary duty of the British government is you, is yeah. the British people. Look after them first. It is that simple. So what we're offering is sanity, common sense. I know those sound like slogans, but there's no other way of describing them. We have got to head back towards that. To my mind, the government's job is to get the basics right. People want a decent job. They don't want to be taxed. The, half their wages go on taxes so they can pay for half of Somalia. They don't want to be in debt up to their ears. They want their kids to go to a good school. They want it to be safe. They want their kids to play out safely. They want to go on holiday. They want a nice life with their families. Secure, safe life with their families. Other than that, the state can stay out of it. The state is the servant and not the commander. And at the moment, it's the other way around. The state is pushing us around. No one in politics is saying what this party is saying. No one. And they're not. And you might get a bit of lip, ser lip service from the Tories, but they don't do anything. About free speech, they're not doing anything. We had a few words, a few bit of murmuring about universities. Nothing's happening. And remember, this is not right. This is Boris Johnson. It's a new government. But the Tories are not a new government. They've been in government since 2010. But this is, they've had time to do this. And whilst I thank the Lord, if whatever is up there, that Jeremy Corbyn didn't win. And I thank him even more. I thank him even more that Labour have learned nothing from Jeremy Corbyn not winning. They are, the lot who are lined up to replace him are possibly even worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's over for them. And, I, and the people, people just like you, people, the people of Merseyside, people across this country are not stupid. No, We're not stupid. And you know when you're hearing BS, and that's what you're getting, not from us. And the last thing I want to say about this party and why you ought to join it, principle, consistency, and stability. I have never bowed down. I have never backpedaled. I have never cowered, I have never denied what I said, I've never apologised for what I said, and I never will, because that's not the reason I'm here. I would rather resign and walk away than betray what I came into this for. I came into this for this country, because I can see that the country I love and the people I love, the people who, it, it, my home, this is my home, and I'm going to fight for my home and the people who make it my home and I am going to fight for them because I care deeply about them and if that is my guide and it is and that is our guide 
and it is. You cannot possibly fail. It's a long slog. No, no, no one said this was going to be easy. And actually, we're doing really well uh, for a new party, and especially a new party that faces the obstacles we face. Endless, endless obstacles. They call us every name under the sun. We'll just hold, we'll just hold our nerve, stick to our principles and keep going. And eventually it will come round to us. All the signs are already there. The woke culture is destroying itself. And we will be the beneficiaries of that. The sane, decent, ordinary people will be the beneficiaries of that. And we will be that party. I've ne you know what? Uh, it's probably quite clear how an, what an ambitious, how determined, how determined I am. I am going absolutely never walking away from this. I have committed my life to it. My, that commitment gets stronger every day. There won't be uh, leadership changes every five minutes. This party is solid. The team beside me is absolutely solid and they'll never know how grateful I am to them. The members of this party, and I, I genuinely cannot express it, how, they, how, I fe how it feels to me to look out there and see these people who have heard what I had to say, who've read the manifesto and thought, yes, I want to be a part of that. If you feel that way, others will. I genuinely believe that if we took our manifesto and took For Britain off it and all the slurs and all the, all, the, all the smears and all the slander and showed it to this country, they would agree, the vast majority would agree with every single word of it. So all we have to do now is persist, persevere, get around the media. We will do that. We'll do what Eddie says, go out, knock on doors. Let's go back to old school politics. They can't stop us from doing that. We can't be blocked by Twitter from knocking on people's doors and telling them the truth about this party. And the truth about this party is that we love this country and we're here to save it and we'll do nothing less than save it. That's my ambition. Thank you all very much for coming along.